Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, so in the previous classes, we have covered topics like uh, setup of uh, JDK, IntelliJ, and we have also seen an introduction to Java, basic introduction to Java, the features of uh, Java, and some of the object-oriented principles. And we also uh, saw some... Oh. Can someone please mute themselves? Yeah, we also saw uh, some basic introduction to data types and how we create a class, some basic uh, Java terminologies, the definitions, and also how what's the relevance of those terminologies, some basic interview questions as well. So uh, before starting this class, I think uh, you all are like quite familiar with these data types as well now. This byte, sort, int, long, for, uh, float, double, boolean, care. These are the primitive data types which we will be heavily using while we go on in the next classes. So I would like to give you a small exercise now. Can you just create a class? Then you can create that main method. Take two inputs, like two numbers, uh, print out their product and uh, just display it uh, on the console. Is the question clear? Means you have to basically take two numbers as input, two integers as input, and print out their products. That's it, nothing else. So you have already seen like how I create the class, right? You can basically go here and create a class, Java class, create a main method, and basically take two integer values, print out their product, and that's it. Is everyone clear about the question? Hello. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, it's not just me always demonstrating the examples, but if you don't uh, do the hands-on, then it won't be too much of use it was it would be just like of a lecture going on and that's why i want you to do some exercise so it's i'll just uh go ahead and create a class like product you can go ahead and create a class like this. So you have a class like this, right? And then we have already seen how we create a main method, right? What your task is, take two numbers, compute their product and print it. This is a very small exercise. It should not take like more than two, three minutes. If anyone is done doing this, you can let me know.
anyone who has completed it Okay, I'll write down the program. Everyone here, please go ahead and follow me and create a Java class. You can name the class as product. And then create this main method until now. And then I'll write down the program. So for taking two numbers, what you basically need to do, if the numbers are like integers, so basically you need to have the data type as integer, right? So I would take int num1, say the first value is 10. So this is it. And a num number two equal to five. So what our object objective is basically we need to like compute the product of these two numbers so i would need some third variable where i basically store the product of these two numbers so this is very basic program so i am taking a third variable anti product where basically i would be computing the product of these two numbers the multiplication of these two numbers and I would be storing that in this. So this is basically number one into number two. The asterisk symbol is basically used for the product. So this is one uh, product statement. So basically int num1 equal to 10. So what happens here is, if you see this statement at line number six, INT is the data type, which is basically uh, signifying that we are using integer data type. So what type of number we want? That is integer data type. Num1 is basically the variable. And then we are assigning this value 10 in Num1. Similarly, we are doing for number two. We are assigning value five in number two and semicolon is basically used at the end of uh, any statement in java so we'll be using semicolon then int product is uh, this product is another third variable we are basically we are uh, computing the product number one into number two asterisk symbol is used for the multiplication and then followed by semicolon then we would be basically just printing this out So system dot out dot print ln is used to print anything to the console. So basically what you can do is like write product of num1. So basically if you want to like provide uh, the again if you want to like print the values here so basically how you do is like out of this double quotes this double quotes is basically used to write any string over here then you can append it by plus plus and then write number one again provide a plus and again you can write some string and again provide the value like number two and 
its product. So the output be product of number one five and number two uh, uh, five is uh, sorry product of number one ten product of and number two five is product. So we should basically expect the value as fifty. Let me run this program. See, product of num1 10 and num2 5 is 50. I want everyone to complete until this point. Let me know if anyone is having any issues in this. Anyone has any queries about this program? This is a very basic program. So everyone should be able to complete it. In case if anyone still has any issues, please let me know. Has anyone completed this? Admasu? Araya? Yeah, I tried to finish, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I made a mistake. It is not a run. Uh, you are not able to run? Yeah, I don't know. Uh -huh. my, my, my package is... Uh, I can you down. can you see your screen? We'll try to solve your problem. Oh, uh, it is disabled. Can you? Okay, okay. Let me enable this. Yeah, you can share your screen now. We'll so we'll see what issue you are facing. Okay. Did you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh. The first one, I don't know. I uh, I have the new project product class and no, no, wait. product class. One, one oh, second. I think this is from here. I created for this test two. Uh, can you go ahead and click on test two? Right click on test two. Okay. Oh no no! Can you move this class into that SRC folder? Is it is SR, it is in SRC folder only, right? Okay, okay. Uh, just click on refactor. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, mm -hmm. See, uh, okay. Now that you can see some red underlines, right? So basically, you have some uh, errors in your program. So that mm -hmm. system.out.print S will be capital at line number eight. Yeah, yeah. S will be capital. Yeah. yeah. That is correct. Okay. And and at line number five and six, you basically need to append a semicolon because all right. the statements you write in Java would be appended by a semicolon. Yeah. Everyone else can also follow this so that uh, uh, this does not have to be repeated again. And everyone, uh, I'm saying this for everyone. If you don't 
do the hands on which uh, is a must it, it won't be much of a use it's not like you get all the lectures from here and then you just go ahead and you will be like learning java if you don't do the hands on then it won't be of much use so please everyone go ahead and like uh, uh means uh, cre create this simple ex uh, class and perform the product of both this yeah oh, there's you, a, there's a typo there as well yeah okay okay i think you don't have a see uh guess so i created a package and then i uh, created the class so basically you have not created the package as of now so basically what you can do is like just remove that statement so now you don't have any errors can you go ahead and run this program again so okay product of p 9 is 72 okay then uh, okay yeah Uh, product of eight and nine means you should have basically means uh, you could write basically in that comment product of B and C, but it is fine. You can just you got how to uh, write those print statements now, right? Ah uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, you can answer your screen. Oh yeah. Okay. Others, have you completed this exercise? Yeah, I tried, but I don't use that one. What is the issue? Can you say your screen? No. Wow. Araya, Freddy, Admasu, mm -hmm. are you guys following me? Yeah, yeah, oh, I think I follow you. Uh, just start, start this one, but we will finish. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me scroll. Let me scroll. Okay, one second. I am trying, Python. Yeah. I am trying, and this is Adamasa. Okay, okay. Seconds. Yeah, please, everyone, please try it. There's, uh, if there's any issue, if there is any errors, I will help you. But you have to definitely try it on your own first yeah okay uh, uh freddy uh just right click on that product class mm -hmm. on the left hand side on the left hand side right click on that see oh, one, one second when you create a class right yeah, i told course. you that we should basically follow a convention that we should use capital letters in the start right the first letter of the class would be a capital letter so oh, the, okay. the, the, yeah do one thing go to refactor rename okay. and make the p a capital so one, one just stop so for everyone see if you want to refactor something suppose you want to like change the name of the class and so what you can basically do is to, like go and click on the file click on refactor click on rename and then click yeah. on this refactor so it basically changes it, so the changes will be like reflected everywhere yeah go okay. click on rename rename or data. rename yeah. only yeah and make the first letter as capital letter yeah click on refactor see uh, uh no 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 one second go go to the below and there's a option called do refactor right yeah I did. no 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 not there not there no 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 just click outside bottom left bottom left no no scroll your cursor below bottom left can you see this one yeah bottom left corner Left, left, do refactor, right? You can see that do refactor. Okay, do refactor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, click on that. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is the one. This one. Yes. Mm, continue, continue. Okay. Yeah, 
yeah so that error is gone means you can see your class is uh, class name is proper now now you have another error come to line number 7 okay line so, number 7 in the program yeah yeah so uh Okay, uh, go inside that curly braces. Okay, inside. Yeah. yeah. Again, start one uh, string. For writing any string, you will need double quotes. Provide a double quote. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can write a product of num1 and num2. No, no. Uh, just uh, num2. Okay, fine. Num2. Mm -hmm. No, yes. it would be num2. Oh, num2, yeah. Yeah, is and, uh, okay. You can go ahead and write plus. Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, no, no. See, any string that you write should be within double quotes. String is basically okay. a sequence of no. characters. No, right. yeah. a, so yeah. it should be is mm -hmm. and outside of that, write plus. Oh, no. Now you are uh, you would be printing the product so product is a variable right so mm -hmm. just after this plus you can uh, write product uh, for plus uh, yeah. encoding the product right? no 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 uh, no no not required product means yeah. if you want to print the value it should not be in product if you want to just write out some string it should be in semicolon so basically you want to print the value now right so yeah, just, uh, yeah. So we yeah. Uh, remove that quotes and just write product. Just product. Yeah. So just click on that. See if when you had written like PR, right? So yeah. you, you are getting some suggestion. So you don't need to write ex entire thing. You can just click on that. That suggestion auto complete feature will help you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right click and then again run this program. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so you you can basically write down the comments properly it means there's there's some uh, typo and all but you got how to write the program right right yeah, yeah. okay yeah okay freddy right. yeah anyone else is facing the problem TJ? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Are you facing any issues? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're facing any issues, can you please share your screen? Uh, Pritam, share your screen, please. Uh, then I can follow your... Uh... Okay. First, you can like try it out on yourself. Because like I have already solved the problem and everyone saw it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, TJ, there's one issue in your uh, program. If you see at line number two, public static void main. See, void V should be in small letters. Yeah. yeah. So... Oh. Uh, just right click on this and no 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 uh, okay yeah you're seeing the product right yeah i see yeah so one thing uh tj i think you had like written entire thing public static void main you typed it all right so what you can do is like just uh go to uh, uh, line number one mm -hmm. after class product after that curly braces move your cursor mm -hmm. press enter just write m-a-i-n main m-a-i-n m-a-i-n okay mm -hmm. just, just press enter press enter see this automatically created this block for you so okay. yeah yeah this is the shortcut you will follow right you don't have to basically write that entire thing it kills your time 
and you can have typos and errors as well, right? Yeah. You you got basically what my intention was. Again, yeah, for, okay, I got it. Yeah, again for writing system dot out dot println, basically go to line number eight, press enter, just write S O U T. It's gonna come down like this. S O U T. Yeah, and just press enter. S O U T and press enter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got that entire print statement, right? So those are the features like autocomplete features of this editor. It will help you. It will also help in like minimizing the errors. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's From it. Here, uh, Prita, okay. Uh, where is your package to this? Uh, see, who is oh, this? I don't think there's a package. If, if something. See, I uh, uh, who was asking about package? Gashu. I guess so. A package was one thing that I told you the concept, but even if there is no package as of now, you can just create a program. Means I'll package is basically used for like providing modular structure to your project, right? But as of now, I've just created a simple uh, program. So uh, I think TJ, you can do one thing. You can go ahead mm -hmm. and click on source file. On the uh, left, on the left hand side, you okay. can see source, right? Yeah. Click on source. For uh, just wait. For everyone who does not know how to create a package and how to place a file in package, TJ will be creating one package. Everyone, please follow and create that package. Uh, uh, for me, I understood how to create it, but uh, you said. We don't need to ask this time for because this is a simple example. No, no. Uh, see, uh, package is used for like providing uh, um, means modules to your project. So this is just some simple pro uh, class that we are seeing. So even if he has not created a package for now, our objective was to like run this program, compute this product of two numbers. So that's it. So I'm not getting into the complexity of getting, creating a package. But still, for everyone, who I created that package and showed you yesterday, uh, means in the last class. Now, TJ will be creating that. Everyone, please follow and create a package such that you also know how to create a package. So he has like right clicked on source folder. He went into like new and then on package. Everyone follow this step and please go ahead and create a package. And you can click on package now. What kind of package? So a package can basically contain your folder and then that folder can have certain subfolders, subdirectories. So basically the convention would be like if you right. write like okay, you can write something like com dot okay. yeah, just delete this com, com dot. dot java dot training mm -hmm. and uh, dot operators you can write just enter press enter yeah now what you can basically do is like click on the class pro everyone if you see this product class right it does not have any package mentioned in the in uh, in the uh, java file as of now right but if you drag and drop this product file click on this product file uh, tj a drag and drop into the package yeah click on refactor now if you go to yeah expand that mm -hmm. so your product uh, java file product dot java is now within that package and you can see that the editor already helped you in creating that statement package com dot java dot training dot operators right so what that basically means is that you have a package which the name of that package is com dot java dot training dot operators and your java class product uh, dot java file is within that package 
everyone is able to follow this. If you are not, please go ahead and do this thing. Create a package and then uh, place your file into that package. TJ, you were able to do it, right? So you have yeah. like followed it until now. For others, I'm like uh, giving some two minutes to complete this. See, the more hands-on exercises you do, right? The more it will help you. It's not just mm -hmm. like uh, listening to some lectures and then you think that you know entirely Java. It won't be like a lot of theoretical when you go for like interviews. So you will have to basically do the hands-on as well. They might ask you to write some simple programs and they might ask you some Java concepts. So you will have to do the hands-on as well. So means start making those efforts now. Means uh, whatever assignments or whatever class demos I'm giving. So try to like uh, do it on your editor as well. That will help you a lot. If there is any issues, if there are any errors, I'm here to help you. But you have to like make the efforts. Um, can I share my screen and, my screen and try to... Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, TJ, you class. can answer your screen. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, you have like created a dot IML file. Uh, can you uh, delete this file? Uh, there's no need, it means this IML file is not required. Can you just go ahead and delete? I think, uh, uh, Admasu, go on file, uh, you delete this file first, test dot IML. Okay. okay. Give me a second. Uh, means click on that file test.iml on the left hand side which one this one no no on the file uh, on the left hand side you see right that file name above the yeah 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 below that test.iml file is there right click on that no, no, you see that test.iml file above the external libraries, right? Above that. Above yeah. that test.iml. Just press your delete and uh, delete key and delete it. Yeah, click on OK. Now what you do basically is like go on file file uh, on the top left corner click on new yeah. Uh, yeah click on new click on project so we are basically seeing how to create a project i think admasu did not create a project java project so anyone who is like unaware of this can uh, just uh, see now that we are creating a new java project uh, click on project. Provide a name, Java training. No, uh, okay, Java training. Click on create. No, uh, I think we don't need spaces. No, no, don't do anything. Just, just. Uh, that is fine if you provide as well, but you, you don't need spaces. Remove that spaces. Okay. In between. Yeah. Click on create. New window. Click on new window. Now, now you see that you have your structure uh, like project structure right and you have your yes. source source directory already created go okay. ahead go ahead and click on source directory src okay yeah right click on that and go to new mm. 
go to package yeah you can write com dot java dot training com dot java dot training dot operators okay just press enter now you see your package created okay. on the left hand side yes. go, ahead, go and click on that package right click on that package now we will see we are going to create a class in that go on new now go and click on java class Uh, you can provide uh, uh, the class name as product. Just press enter. You see your class is created in the package now, right? At line number one, you can see the yes. package statement is already there. At line number three, you yes. can see publish class product. So your class is created oh. within this pro, uh, package. So within this curly braces, go and press enter. At line number four, uh, okay. Yeah, means see this curly braces now show your starting of the class and ending of this class. So opening curly braces is basically Opening curly bracket is basically showing that your class starts here. At line number okay. five, at line number five, you have your uh -huh. closing closing curly bracket. So that shows that your class ends here. So whatever code you will be writing, basically you will be writing between this opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket, right? So press okay. any press anywhere between those uh, curly braces. Like this, press enter. Yeah, so now what was our objective? We had to like take two numbers and calculate their product and print out the product, right? Yes, yes. So now basically take two integers like int a equal to no, no need of writing comment. You can like remove that comment. No, no, no need okay. of writing that comment. That was for like showing what was our objective. Since uh, in the interest of time, we'll just calculate the pro uh, take two numbers and ca calculate the product. You can write out like int int space num one equal to 10. I think you already showed how uh, you, you were able to follow until now, right? I already showed that yes. for like two, three people. So will you be able to like complete the program now? No, for uh, us. Just do it now. Let me, your... Yeah, just, okay, okay. Just follow me. Okay. Semicolon, semicolon, not colon. Yeah. Until I must have created, can I ask you one question? Uh, yeah, uh, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, when we created uh, the project, uh, uh, you know, different uh, directors generated auto, yeah? For example, when he created Java training, so a different directory ideas, stores, external and uh, scratches, something which is uh, generated. So. Can you uh, a little bit describe for the function of for all uh, directories? Because I confuse. You said for an, uh, a resource uh, we will create for a module that means for a package. But when we create the uh, the main uh, application, uh, so means we created one package, right? 
com.java.training.operators. So if you expand that, I, I'll show you like, uh, yeah. Yeah, source file is for my understood. It is only created as a module and uh, like property something so. But the main uh, uh, applications or APIs when we create, when we create. So from inside idea or source or external, no, no, no. It, it will be it will be inside source. Means basically you will have to see when we create the APIs, your REST APIs, uh, and we write the configurations file, right? So that's like see, this is a plain Java project. When we create your REST APIs, we will be basically going for a Spring Boot project. And when you click on Spring Boot project, right? So your editor will automatically create an SRC folder for you. And then there will be something called as resources folder for you. So in resources folder, basically you will be placing some static files. And in your SRC folder, basically you will be writing all your Java related files. So that is the structure when we go for that resources folder and all. Let's not go into that as of now because we are not creating a Spring Boot project. Let's stick to like core Java. So for now, you have your source folder and whatever packages you create, you will be basically creating those packages within that source folder, SRC folder, and all the Java programs you will be writing here. Any confusion until now? Yeah, so are we uh, working a uh, real-time project uh, after we finish this one or no, if you if you will work, uh, that is... Uh, See, uh, guess so. Everything will go with step by step by step. If I go ahead now and start creating a real-time project, I think like most of you will not get it, right? Because you don't know the basics as of now. And like, uh, these are very basics that I'm teaching you as of now. So we cannot go all at the end step right now, right? So I'll take one step at a time, teach you all the concepts, and then at the end, we'll be basically going for a project. We'll see how to like create APIs and how to like hit endpoints. Like uh, basically you are entering some information uh, you have some employee and that employee feeds certain information and based on that information, your endpoint should provide some kind of like output, right? So we'll be basically seeing those things when we uh, go ahead and uh, learn Spring Boot. But let's go now with uh, basic Java concepts and hands-on so that you basically get a grasp of the Java language and uh, then you will be able to basically uh, use these concepts while we basically create our projects. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. Sure. So, uh, Admasu, you have a typo at line number eight. Go ahead and delete this entire line. I think I already showed you how we basically have a shortcut for creating this print LN statement. Yeah, just write SOUT. And one more thing, I think uh, you are doing something very wrong here. You have not created your main method here and you are just writing within that class. Just create a main method. No, go at line number four. No, no, don't right click, write M-A-I-N. Yeah, just enter. Then copy paste line number eight to line number 10. Just cut this entire thing and place it within that curly bracket, within that main method. No, all at once you can copy and just paste it there. From line number eight to line number 11, just copy every, cut everything. Uh, Admasu, yeah, N not that line number 12. 
okay go ahead and place it at line number six place your cursor at line number six and just paste those uh just uh go at line number nine yeah delete that and write sout once more write sout once more yeah click enter just write product there product yeah enter 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 now you see you still have some error in your uh, program that is remove because curly curly you have one extra curly bracket remove one extra curly bracket from the end at line number 14 yeah and now right click and run this program Right click. Uh, right click and you will get options to run the program. You see run product dot main. Yeah, click on that. see you have your product now right product of both the numbers you can see in your terminal in your console right so this is fine Adma. So you are able to run uh, your program successfully now you got how to create a package and how to create a class and in the main method you basically need to write your logic part or the code that you have to write is that clear yeah, it's clear. Yeah. Anyone else who has not completed until now? Solomon, Araya. Yeah, me. Uh, have you all completed this? No, no. My internet path is not opening. Sorry, what? Can I share my screen, please? Yeah, Adma, so you can unshare your screen. What happened here? No, no. Uh, open your IntelliJ. You haven't still open your IntelliJ? You were done with the installation and all last class, right? Yes. So it doesn't come here. I'd, I even try to pin it. On no, the no. taskbar and then I don't see it. No, no. Uh, go ahead and in the search buttons. Uh, yeah, click on that. Can you give me control? Yeah. Yeah. I think I have to download file. I have to open it. Not insert. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you completed the installation process and all. You think he said on a pop up? Yes or no? Administration need.
what is the issue with your integer you were able to open this last class right Wait a minute. See, before every class, right? Please keep your IntelliJ IDEA uh, editor open, right? So that it does not like, uh, uh, you don't have issues with going with the class. No, I think your screen is like hung. Um... So it says uh, it's already there when when we try to yeah I see. I see that do you have any memory issues like your system is already full or something no that that one that error is gone because the other day I deleted many files and I installed it. IntelliJ was already open, the uh, file, uh, everything was there. Why is your screen going blank when I click on run as administrator? So I'm, I'm clicking on yes, and it, it's showing me that it's, it already exists. Do you see my... Um... Currently, your screen has gone blank for me, so... I don't know why that happens. So I'm clicking yes and Okay, wait a minute. Show me that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm doing just uh... It's not able to uninstall as well. Mm. Can you click on that uninstall? Alright. Okay. Click on that uninstall where I have placed the cursor. I don't know if. So you don't see my cursor at this time? No, no. Just press on that uninstall button. Nothing is happening, right? Yeah, it shows me yes or no, and I'm pressing on yes. Okay, uninstall, press yes. 
Okay, yes. I think it's an installing. Okay. Wait, uh, uh, yeah, we'll do this uninstall. I don't know what happened and how. Please confirm if you delete. Check, uh, click on this check boxes. Delete IntelliJ. Click on this. We you see two check boxes, right? Click on this. Was. Yeah, both. Then click on unist uninstall. Uh, do okay. And press OK to retry the uninstall. Click on. This okay. is this open somewhere. Okay. Uh, can you like? Okay, one second. Open your task manager and just close anything uh, like yeah. editor. Yeah, open the task manager. Click on this. Okay, one second. Is what? your system like 32 bit or 64 bit? 64. 64. So why did you install your 32 bit operating? Uh, means you should have basically uh, downloaded 64 bit IntelliJ okay. idea, right? I think we did the other day. But this is 32 bit, right? Uh, just do one thing. Just close all these things. IntelliJ, wherever you see IntelliJ, right? Uh, uh, select and yeah this one all three select all three end task right you see that end task you see that end task at the bottom yeah yeah just do it as quickly as possible do that IntelliJ idea as well. Yeah, fine. What is this? Close, close, close that. Means I, I don't want to like, yeah, close this. Click on this OK. OK, can you go to your C drive now for the time being? Okay, uninstall was close this. Uninstall was done. Click on C drive. Go, uh, can you go below? Scroll below. Scroll below. Where do you want to go? I want to see your program files. Okay, can you go in the top? Okay. Can you go and click on Java? Mm, Java. Java. You were able to get the JDK versions, right? Last day? Yeah. Okay. Okay, your Java is there. Now quickly go to open a Chrome and download again 64-bit uh, IntelliJ idea. I think yours was 32-bit. IntelliJ download, yeah, go in that. No, no, uh, download. Wait a minute. I will let me do it.
Can someone please mute themselves? I think I'm getting a lot of noises from the background. Can you please mute yourself? Hello. I think I provided that link in last class, right? On that WhatsApp group, I am testing. Okay, wait a minute. Can someone ping that uh, IntelliJ idea link that I provided in that Zoom chat? What do you, you need the... Uh... Is that when the YouTube video, video? No, no, not the video. Which one? The IntelliJ community. Okay, wait a minute. IntelliJ idea community to download. See, from the next class, everyone has to like keep their IntelliJ idea ready before the class. We don't want these delays because of this, like a lot of time gets wasted, right? Uh, anyone other than Araya was facing the problem of running that program? Hello? For my side, I'm okay. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Let this just get downloaded. I'll just be back in a minute.
हे आ रहा है हेलो हेलो हे रहा है अर्युद यस यस कैन यू ओपन योर डाउनलोड्स फोल्डर see uh araya can you like free up your spaces in this c drive your c drive is already like full and this intellij idea needs like more than 2 gb is or 2 gb i think you you might have memory issues as well in your system so please free up those spaces yeah, i'll we... clean up i'll clean up but there was enough memory and we installed it and we opened it the other day see see because of memory issues also this issues occur your system is like almost full so there will be issues mm -hmm. can you just free up some 2 3 gb of space right now just delete something in c drive if there is something you can like clean up go in c drive c drive i think there is enough space for this to load see uh raya because of memory issues and all these applications are consume like more memory right so because of memory issues and all this when this gets installed right it needs more memory sometimes 2 gb or something more than that as well because of less memory this can like uh, there can have it can have issues like while opening up startup of the application okay all free all free uh, more space but for now it's going to install i think so see, this was see you just have like 400 mb extra left you should basically like keep at least like 5 to 6 gb ex space apart from this oh. like open yes. okay okay click this on next be... i have click. to do this Can you open your C drive in the meantime? Araya, can you open your C drive? Yes, okay. Do you have any like videos or anything uh, which is like not much required here? Can you like remove after those things? Like, uh, I'll, I'll do this uh, after this installment. No, there are like lots of things like uh, because like... this is gonna take me, it's gonna take me to time to. to know which which ones to delete
I think the installation was going on and somehow I don't know where it actually went. It is definitely due to this memory spaces. So this is sound. What is this? Just close this. See, you definitely have memory issues, Araya. See, for now, I won't be able to solve your memory issues. What you can do is like the YouTube videos also I've already uh, uploaded. So in the interest of time, I will go ahead with the class. You can like free up okay. your space. Okay. You can free okay. up the spaces. Right. And uh, after this, right, what you can do is like do a fresh installation. I think the YouTube yeah, videos are... Okay. The YouTube videos also I have like already uploaded on the channel and Ravi has uh, provided the link for that. So you can do that and uh, then you can like follow those. In the next class, we'll see if you ha still have any problem with this, right? Hello? Hello? Hello, Ara, you there? He said, okay, he said, okay, chat, okay. Mm -hmm. chat. We all have a problem, we just go to this. Yeah, uh, you can unshare your screen, please, Ara. Okay. I think uh, other people have completed this uh, exercise, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'll go ahead with the contents of today. So, okay, so we had already seen the data types and uh, the primitive data types. Uh, we were able to. Uh... Your screen is not shared, sorry. Okay, sorry, just a minute. Yeah, so we had already covered these primitive data types last class, and I'll uh, show some more examples on this now. So if you can see this, this is also a simple class where uh, we want to like do some kind of calculation. And basically, this is a simple program where uh, we are basically converting you know temperature, right? Temperatures in Celsius, temperatures in degree Fahrenheit, right? The body temperature or the climate temperature. So what basically this uh, program is doing is like taking some uh, temperature and it's like converting it to the other unit. So basically we have like uh, Celsius as the one a temperature unit and we have like Fahrenheit as the other uh, uh, temperature unit and you can take like this is that uh, this is the formula for computing you don't need to like memorize the formula formula will already be given to you so basically if you multiply this uh, temperature into this one right plus 32 if you have this formula you will be basically able to convert this my I'll show it with some other example. So what my intention is like, I'll create another class. So I'm creating a class area. Everyone following me? Okay. Yeah, I'm creating a class area. I'm creating the main method. You all know until this point now, right? 
how you create a class, how you create a main method. So basically, what my intention is, I'll be basically uh, writing a program to create uh, calculate the area of rectangle. How we basically do that is everyone knows uh, the area of rectangle be, can be calculated by uh, multiplying uh, the length and uh, width of the rectangle, right? So formula basically is like area equal to length into width. Yeah, so if you can see this double uh, slashes, what I'm providing is right. Basically, it's used for like writing comments. If you want to like provide some kind of comments or documentation to your program, you can uh, write down this with the help of this double slash. So this will basically be a single line comment. And there's another uh, way of commenting as well, like multi-line comment, which I'll show you later. But for now, this is like single line comment. You can provide some simple documentation to your program. So you should basically do like documentation as well for the program so that if anyone reads your program, they basically get to know like what your intention is to write this program. Why are you basically writing this program? So I'm writing like calculate the area of rectangle, area equal to length into width. So this is what we'll be basically exactly doing now. So I'm taking a double value, double length. And you know that double basically takes like decimal values. So it can have like values after the decimal as well. So it would be 25 into 4, 25.4, then double width equal to 5.4. 5.5. So now we'll be computing the area. So you know that to when we uh, compute the area, this will also be a decimal value, right? Means it can have some values after the decimal as well, right? So for those things, we will be again taking the double data type, double area of rectangle. Just see the convention of uh, one second. Just see the convention of the variable that I'm using. Right? This has three words area of rectangle. So like first word will be entirely small, and then the second word will have its first letter capital. Third word third word will have its first uh letter capital so you should always follow this convention i'll be reminding you in between but you should like make this into a practice to follow the conventions so area of rectangle will be basically length multiplied by width right so this is the area of rectangle so now what i will do is I'll print out this area of rectangle. Again, I'm using that SOUT print statement. So I'll just write out some comments, like uh, means some string uh, output area of rectangle. Is equal to area of rectangle. I will go ahead and run this. So area of rectangle is something like 139.7, right? So last class we also, so everyone is clear with this, right? There was nothing special. There was one product class that we already saw. This is similar to that, but I will teach you some more concepts here. Everyone is clear until now, right? Yeah. This, uh... The you can say flattening, right? And double is only two, two digits. I mean, 
yeah i'll teach you like float and double as well no I this see. double can have like any like more digits as well like yeah, i see one but okay yeah you can like, uh, how do, how do, i mean how is the, what's the difference i mean until here. yeah 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 so float and double have difference so last class we saw this slide right where there was like float and then there was like double so float will give you basically precision like up to seventh and eighth digit only but double will give you like more precision you can have like 16 to 18 digit as well in uh double so and double the storage capacity of double is basically more than that of float so when you want to like do bigger computations of decimal values you can go for like double and when you want to like do uh, smaller computations you can basically go for float so i'll teach you like one more thing here this was one example like area using uh, this double uh, operators now i'll uh, create like another class volume i'll just uh, create something like float length equal to 10 f so when we create a float uh, value we basically have to like provide an f at the end so that denotes a float value float width equal to 4 f so i'm basically computing volume of cuboid and volume of cuboid is basically length into height into width length into width into height so what i'll basically do is i'll take th three all the three parameters float height equal to 3f now again i'll just compute uh float uh volume equal to length into width into height i'll write down volume of cuboid is volume i'll run this program so the volume of cuboid is this much 120 dot dot zero now we'll do a see we were getting proper output until now right now what our intention is like i am trying to assign a double value to this variable at line number eight double value is like something with a decimal value without this f at the end right so see i'm creating something like double uh, value equal to 25.0 everyone clear until now there's nothing special that I've done th in this program. It's just that I've taken three parameters, length, width, and height, and I've taken the product of those, and that gives me the volume of the cuboid. Everyone following until now? Uh, yes, only for I see the difference between double and float. Uh, you know, when we uh, write, uh, float length uh, is equal to 10 f uh, you added f but when you double we are not added any correct uh, correct current variables yes yes and one more thing like double has more storage capacity this you need to keep in mind right yeah, after, yeah. After decimal, it just continues right yeah. yeah double has more storage capacity so whatever yeah. 
whatever float can store, double can also store. But whatever double can store, float will not be able to store. So for now, I'm like, I'll show you some more things in this example. So see, when I write value equal to length, you can see that we are easily able to assign this length into this variable value means value was all means initially we assigned the value variable with a value of 25.0 right yeah. now length has a value of 10 f now what we are doing is like if we assign this length into this value so the value initial value was 25 but it it will be like overwritten right so if you like assign this 10 f into this if you assign this length variable into this value so the value uh, variable will be like overwritten so it will have the value now 10 10 f now i will print it this print this value You can see this value is 10 now, right? I will put this same statement here. See, at line number 8, we had the value 25.0. Then I put a print statement here. Now the value of uh, variable value is uh, 25.0. Now, what happened was like, at line number 16, what we are basically doing mm, is over. assigning plus override because uh, reassigning is... new value to value. Everyone clear until now? Uh, because the, I mean, overriding the double. Correct, Bank, correct. Right? Yeah. So because of storage, I mean yeah. So initial the initial value of value was 25.0, and mm -hmm. then we are like overriding the uh, value with the new value. What length had? Length had the value 10f. So we were able to do this. Like value equal to length, and we are printing the new value now. So basically, if you see in the console. I will write the comment new value after reassignment. You can see the difference in the console. New value after reassignment is 10.0, right? Everyone clear until now? There's nothing uh, much that I have done. But what I'm trying to show is like double is a value which has like more storage. Float is a value which has like less storage than double. So any value which float can store, double can also store. Right? Now I will do one more thing. Assign double value to float. So I will take width. Width is a float type data type, right? You can see this line number 13. This is a double, uh, uh, this is a float type data type. So if I give it like 5F, this is fine. What I'm trying to do now is like, I will try to like assign the value which is in double into this width. So what I will do is like value. So can you see that this is throwing me error? Can anyone let me know why this line is throwing error? It's it required to flow. It's required to flow. 
sorry the weed is just float all right so the value yeah so value that so the values data type is double and with data type is float right and we already know that double is a, a data type which has more storage so what we can do is like this double cannot be stored in float but float can be stored in double you got it right because a smaller smaller data type can be stored into double uh, into the higher data type but not the opposite so i'll with equal to i'll write something here i will provide you some explanation for here like compile time error so whatever red errors you see right now when you uh, write this program right so these are like compile time errors your editor will already tell you that these are compile time errors what you are getting so this is compile time error because uh, double is a higher storage data type than float. So I'll just comment this out so that you are able to know that this will throw error. Now, here I'll write down the comment, no errors in assigning float to double since float data type is a lower storage data type than double. Everyone clear until now? So, Prita, uh, sorry. So, for my understood, uh, you know, we have a, a double and float. So, when we, uh, the variable uh, double and float, uh, uh, right now, it, uh, the double is value and the float is language. So, value is equal to language, is there is no through error uh, because uh, double is uh, lower than uh, float uh, storages. Correct. Double Best store storage. Is, we, double storage yeah. is larger than float. So when you assign a float value to double, that will not throw an error. You are correct. We did, yeah, we did is equal to value. So it is not uh, uh correct. It uh yeah, it throws compile uh, time errors. That means uh that is storage issue. Only is a storage issue. Yeah, means that see that the, I'll show you like let's go step by step so it's like storage uh this uh when you have a large data type and we when you have a small data type so you cannot just store a large data type into a small data type that will throw you a compile time error in java so means one, one thing is clear right double has more storage than uh, float this you are clear Yes, sir. You're there. Uh, not really, uh, pretty time because okay. you know, right now the example is value, uh, no more than the float storage. Uh, so twenty five is not more than float storage. No, so no, no, no. Go, don't, don't go, see. don't go with that twenty five. So when I talk about the storage, right? I talk about the range. I'll show you like in the previous slide. Uh, I think you are getting confused. See, we were talking about this entire range here. So, see, byte, sort, int, long, right? See, this bytes range is this much. 2 raised to the power 7 to 2 raised to the power 7. And sort, again, this is range. So, 
I'll show you one more slide. Okay. Let's go into this slide. I'll show you one slide here. So, if you see this slide, I was trying to go to, to this slide at some later point of time, but now you're getting a bit confused. So see, there is some like promotion to demotion rule. If you see this right, the, the data types at the top, right? If you see these promotions, this double, float, long, int. So what this means in Java is like basically double is a higher storage value. Float is a lower data type than uh, double. And long is even uh, means smaller data type than uh, this uh, float. So, so on. And what that means is basically your double can store float and then similarly your long can store the int and these things. So what here I would try to do is like when I try to like assign this length into this value, length is of float and value is of double. So this will never throw me an error. But if I try to like store a double into a float, that will like uh, provide me error. So that will throw me compile time error. Now there is something we can still do. Now we know that width is of float type and value is of double type, right? Did you see that error went away? Now this has this is throwing me error, right? Because we are trying to store a double value into a float. Uh, guess how you're there? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't catch up. Sorry about that. Because uh, for my understood, uh, based on the example, but uh, uh, he said no concern the example. That is not concern for the value of the... Uh, see. This tw value 25.0 and 10f don't go with this. Understand one rule that when we as have a, as, as a logic that is uh, understood, but based on this example, uh, I confuse a little bit. Yeah. So see, forget about the value that we are assigning this 25.0, 10f, 4f, 3f. It's like your data type. There's some kind of rule that whatever data type is like higher storage value in Java, that can store the uh, means data type of the lower storage uh, value, but the opposite is not true. Okay. So float, float is basically a lower storage data type than double. So it will not be able to store your double. So okay. that is why at line number 21, it is again throwing me error, right? because we are assigning a double into float. So this is throwing me error, but there is some other rule that we can still do this means the lower storage data type can store the higher, but we will have to do something about it. So if I write, uh, means this value is of double and then what I'm doing is like, I'm uh, providing some small braces and then I will try to like write it float. So this is some kind of like forcefully converting a double value into float. You're getting it? I will write out the comment here. Explicit. Explicit conversion of double into float. So this is something like explicit conversion of double into float. If you remove this thing, you will again get an error. You started getting an error, but this is like some kind of like forcefully or explicit conversion of double into float. This, so this double is a more common use to the plot. Right? Yeah, Nothing. double generally you will be like using more than float. It would be more common data type 
but i am like teaching you the concepts like this is an explicit conversion of double into float earlier you saw that we cannot convert double into float simply you were getting compile time errors at line number 20 you were getting this compile time error right because i have write, written exactly like why you were creating the errors as well and at line number 22 we saw that we are still able to uh, convert a higher data type into lower but we are doing something like forcefully or explicitly so explicit conversion of double into float so i'll write it down so this is called like type casting as well type casting explicit conversion of higher data type to lower data type so this is like type casting again so how we basically do type casting is we will uh, provide a small bracket and then provide the type of data type that we want to convert into so width is of type float and uh, dub uh, this so whatever type width has width has like float data type so we are basically providing in type casting we will be providing this small braces and we'll provide that value uh, we'll provide that data type float so this will be explicit conversion going ahead with today right i will uh, give you all these Java files as well uh, so that you can go ahead and just uh, review those on your own as well in your free time. I will provide all this uh, whatever files I've created, right? I will provide this to you. Uh, I will send an email to you all. Okay. Yeah. One more so, question before that. Uh, yeah, sure. Before, I mean, at my Oh, this view, view, I mean, 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 I I think it's better, right? Yeah, yeah. Now it is better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, when you create this volume, right? Under volume batch, batch H1, dot IML, in the package area. Yeah, that's done. Batch one yeah. dot IML, right? Yeah. This one you say deleted before, right? I mean, when you add muscle, can you delete it? He, no, he, uh, we, we, it. we we will go to these things later. You don't have to worry about this. In the in your dot IML file, you will not be able to write your uh, uh, Java programs. So what Admasu was trying was to do was in the dot IML file, he was trying to like uh, basically write his Java program. So basically, the extension of your Java program is like dot Java. So break the extension of this file is like break dot Java. Employee is like employee dot Java. So uh, you won't be able to write like your Java programs into this .ml file. So this is basically like generated by uh, the project itself. When you, I did not create this file. So when I basically uh, create the project, right, it will basically create this .ml file for me. So this would basically have the information of your module. Like you have your Java module, and then there are like source directory, those kind of things. So this is not, uh, this file you won't be able to like basically write your Java programs. Okay. So yeah. no problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, everyone clear until now? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So... Okay. So we had like seen these examples, like I showed you with some other example where we were trying to like get the uh, 
output of two variables we were we, we tried seeing the data types example by computing area by computing volume right and then see we let's come to this point where we are uh, uh, you can see this program right writing comments so this is like a single line comment where you can see we already saw, uh, saw this when we are uh, writing some documentation that I want to provide single line comment. This is like providing comments to your code. So this is when you just provide this double slash and write something, some documentation over here, this will be a single line comment. Now Java also provides you the facility to like write multi-line comment. So basically when you have like more documentation, which cannot be like just written in a single line. So what you want to basically do is like, you want to go for a multi-line comment. So let me show how that multi-line comment is written. So I'll just write a multi-line comment over here. So you, one second. So you provide a, a slash, forward slash, and then you provide a asterisk. And then what you basically, I will provide some documentation. Now this class contains the P6 of operator of data types and operators data types and operator type conversion type casting I provided some documentation over here and you can see this. This is basically called a multi-line comment from line number three to line number five. You can see how we basically write a multi-line comment. We will provide a forward slash followed by an asterisk. And then whatever documentation we want to write, we write the documentation. And then again, we provide a star and we uh, provide a forward slash. So this is just for like documentation of purpose. You can, uh, when you want to like write multi-line comment, you can like write down like this. Is that clear? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. So one more thing. How do we basically write down the constants? So. There, there can be like several use cases where you will have some values where you want to like keep the value same, constant. You don't want to basically change the um, value of that particular data whole throughout the program. Means sometimes you know that uh, when you compute the value of pi, pi is like 3.142, right? Everyone knows like what is pi, if, if, even if you don't know, right? That is fine. Means suppose some value won't change whole throughout the program. So we can name such things as like constant. So if you can see this slide, right? This line, static final float pi equal to 3.146F. Again, see, this is a float data type, right? We have written float pi equal to 3.1416F. So we provided one F at the end. This is because uh, this is a float data type. And then we have like something called a static and final. I will teach you in great detail why we basically provide the static and final. So static and final, when we provide something before a data, uh, before any data type, it is used to like mark that value as, uh, as constant. So this particular value cannot be changed whole throughout the uh, program. 
because we have like mark data as uh, static final. So this is basically a constant. Its value cannot be changed. So for that purpose, we have provided these two keywords static and final. I will teach you in more detail about the static and final. But for now, if you can see this constant, whatever constant that we want to have, this will already be in all caps, right? So if you can see this variable name, pi, pi, this is all in capital letters, right? So let me go ahead and create something like this. And one more thing, all the constants, anything that you have like static, right? You static variables, you need to like create before this main method or you need to like create here. Any final variables, right? So you will be basically creating it here before the main method and within this block, static, final, uh, float, pi equal to 3.14 to f. So this is it. Now, if I go ahead, at line number 18, right? Do you see I'm getting some kind of red underline error? At line number 19, if you can see, this is giving me some kind of error. And it is saying that cannot assign a value to final variable pi. Right? Everyone can see this? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yes, I can see. Yeah. So yes, why, why this is? Because we already have like at line number 10, we have like static final float pi equal to 3.142f. What that means is like we provided static and final to make, to make this value as constant. Means its value cannot change. So if you want to again provide some other value at some point, like I provided some other value at this line number 19, right? So this will give me an error because this is a constant. This is already declared like a constant value and we cannot change the, this constant value, right? So this is giving me error. This is giving me compile time error. I will write down this, like why we were basically getting this error. Compile time error. Because pi is a final variable. It can't be changed. Got it? Everyone clear until now? Hello? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this were like, uh, this was like very basic things. I'll go on to some uh, other slides as well. So these are like very straightforward things. I won't be providing you a demo on this because we have already seen this thing, how you do the product, how you do a sum of two numbers, how you pro do the multiplication. So this is just like operators. What we basically use. So for addition purpose, we are using a plus sign. For subtraction, we are using a minus. For multiplication, we are using an asterisk. For division, we are using this forward slash. And for remainder, if you want to like find out the remainder, basically you use this percentage sign. So if you do like 5% 2, what will 5% 2 give? It will basically give you 1, right? Means when you divide 5 by 2, you basically get a remainder as 1, right? Means if you divide like 5 by 2, means 2 into 2 is 4, and you get a remainder 1, right? So basically this is used to compute remainder. This is like a percentage sign. So this will basically give you a remainder. Then there is something called like unary, uh, unary minus and unary plus. So 
means before any variable if you like uh, if you have your minus uh, in brackets and plus in brackets right so this is for like representing your unary representing your value like this is not greatly used but sometimes you might see it somewhere it is unary plus is used to represent your positive value unary minus is used to like uh, present your negative value i'll just uh, try to like show you something like this let's go to this place and um, int a equal to 10 now a equal to in a plus No, uh, we don't provide the bracket over here. We just write it simply like this. So see, int a equal to 10, right? So when you just provide a minus a over here, so you can like reassign this value into this z. So z will be basically minus 10. You are negating the value of this a, means a was like 10, and then you are negating the value, means you are uh, basically multiplying it by minus one, and you are, converting this positive value into a negative value. So Z will basically be minus 10. So this is it. Now Z is your like a uh, negative value. So for that purpose, you can like use this uh, plus and minus. Let's go to other uh, increment and decrement operators. So this is important. You may get uh, interview questions out of this. Let me create one example for increment and decrement operator. Increment, decrement operators. So I've created a class for increment, decrement operator. I, I will extend this class for like 10 minutes. Is that fine with all of you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah. So I have one uh value like anti x equal to five. And what I'm basically doing is now, I will try to like print out the value of five. So there are two operators. One is like plus plus. Other is like minus minus. So plus plus is basically your increment operator and minus minus is basically your decrement operator. So when I say like plus plus x, this is like this expression is same as like plus plus x and x equal to x plus one are same. This, these two statements are same. You got it? Then minus minus x and x equal to x minus 1 are same. These statements are same. Now, if I write here plus plus x, can you tell me like what this will print? The initial value of x was 5. Now at line number 14, I am printing out like plus plus x. What would this print? Uh, the, the two times. I mean, two times 5. Why will... No, why will this print uh, 5 two times? 
can you see like what at line number 18 I have written? Plus plus x is basically x equal to x plus 1. So what was the initial value of x? 5. Mm -hmm. So okay. plus 1 would basically mean it 6, right? Oh, 6. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. So let me go ahead and print this one. 6. Everyone okay. following it until now? Okay, okay. You got this? So initial value of x was 5. When I did this plus plus x, so this is basically x equal to x plus 1. Mm -hmm. And x plus yeah. one, x plus one. So one more thing, when we write this command here, right? X equal to x plus one, right? How this computation basically takes place is first the right, we we you see this equal to sign, right? Yeah. So the right hand thing is computed first. So this calculation will be done first. Five plus one, and then. Again, this value, when it is calculated, it will be like assigned to this left-hand variable. So now x is assigned with a new variable. So right-hand thing is complete, uh, calculated first. And then once this calculation is done, this will be basically assigned to this left-hand side variable. So x plus 1 is basically 5 plus 1 equal to 6. And then our x variable got updated with a new value so that is 6 so this is x equal to x plus 1 this is same as like plus plus x everyone clear until now this is very straightforward and simple mm -hmm. okay now let's see another thing this was clear now what I'm doing is basically x plus plus And so what will x plus plus? x plus plus x and x plus plus are a bit different. I'll show you what exactly this is. If you basically print this, it will print again x plus plus. Uh, uh, sorry, it, it will again print this 6 only. But if you again print this x, right? What do you expect this will print the third time? Can anyone tell me? Oh, second half. Um, like six plus uh, six, uh, six, uh, six, uh, six, uh, six, uh, six and also at line number 18. What will this print statement basically print? So, this was like printing me six, right? And yeah, again, this was six. also printing me six. Now, yeah. what will this print me? Seven, seven, because yeah. How, how many people are saying 7? How many people are saying 6? I am saying 5. Just 5. Why are you saying 5? Okay. The because initial the initial value of x was 5. Six, that six. is why. Okay. Yeah. Add, logically, yeah, add, add all that. Yeah. Anyone saying 5? Who is saying 5? Anyone more who is saying 5? But I have said I am saying 6. Okay. And how many people are seeing seven? I say seven. Can you all write down in the chat window all your answers? Whatever you're thinking, maybe you might be right, you may be wrong. No problem about that, but please try it. I think we have few people more left. Can you please uh, go ahead and write it down as quickly as possible? Okay. Okay, fine. I'll just uh, run this program now. So this is printing me seven. I will tell you like what exactly happened through the entire program. So at line number six, we have assigned our variable x with a value of five. So this is our initial declaration, right? Inici we also call this 
us like initialization so this was our initial value initialization and declaration okay so now at line number 16 what we yes. basically let Edition. me yeah let me explain yeah at line number 16 basically right what we did was like plus plus x so plus plus x is basically x equal to x plus 1 so what happened was like your x plus 1 5 plus 1 equal to 6 and then what it what it did was basically it updated the previous value of 5 to 6 so x equal to 5 now became x equal to 6 because we had like plus plus x and plus plus x basically means x plus 1 everyone clear at line number 16 yes yeah and now what happens at line number 617 we did a x plus plus so what it basically does is like it basically prints the value first and then increments it so this is called post increment operator operator so prints first and then increments so basically it printed the value first x equal to 6 and then it incremented then it went from 6 to 7 so by the time we came at line number 18 so the value was 7 so even if we like uh, print this now this was like printing me 7 because of line number 17 this was like printing me 7 because x plus plus is like post increment operator so first it will print and then it will increment so the value 6 was printed here and again this was like incremented to 7 so again if at line number 18 we are printing this we are getting a value of 7 because this was incremented in the previous step any doubts anyone Now, is this clear for everyone? This is prefix increment operator and the next one is postfix, uh, postfix uh, uh, increment operator. So prefix will prefix will basically increment first and then print. Post will, postfix will basically print first and then increment. You might get sometimes some uh, tricky objective questions uh, based on this one. Okay, one more thing. I am creating one more quiz here and it is z equal to 10 and so then, next next is that uh, when we print uh, x plus plus it will be print 7 or 8 uh you want me to basically print again x plus plus 19 yeah can you add 19 uh, s out x plus plus, x plus. Mm -hmm. what do you think it will print it is uh, seven or as it is seven or eight? No, I'm asking you. I know the answer, but I'm asking you what at at line number nineteen. What do you expect this will print? I expected for it is increment eight. Uh, so sorry, what's the value it will print at line number nineteen? Eight. Why I'm will it? Eight. Why will it, it print eight? It is increment. Yeah, the first no. one six 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 plus. No, uh, x plus c at line number 18, the value of x is now 7, right? Mm -hmm. So, the value at line number 18 is 7. So, the line, what 
X plus plus is which type of operator? It is post phase increment operator, right? What it will do is like it will print first and then increment. So this will basically be seven, seven only, and then it will increment. So now at line number 20, this is incremented thing. So at line number 20, you will basically get this eight. Mm -hmm. Let me print let me print this again. C six six seven seven eight. Mm -hmm. You got it? Okay, got it. Anyone has any confusion? Let me give it one example here. So this is plus plus Z. Then this is like Z plus plus and then there is like uh, Z I'll give you like four options here So first option is like 10, comma 10, comma 10. Second option is B, option B is like 11, comma 11, comma, okay. And comma eleven, comma twelve, Can you all uh, put it in the chat window, whichever option you feel is right? Don't try it out on your editor, editor and then tell me the answer. Please uh, uh, compute it. Uh, please don't try it on your editor and just say the answer. That would be cheating. No, why it is like P and T both. Oh, B and D are like, oh, I provided the same options. Okay, sorry, my bad. I want everyone to try out here. Yeah. Let me try to run this program now. So it provided me the answer 11, 11, 12. Why? Because initial value of Z was 10. Now we did a plus plus Z. So plus plus Z is basically incrementing first and then printing. So it, it is equal to 10, equal to 10 plus one. So 10 plus one will be 11. Now, when we are doing a Z plus plus, so this Z plus plus will print it first. So it, initially this was already incremented to 11. So this will print 11 and then increment it. So it incremented to 12 now. And then uh, here we are just printing Z, whatever uh, the updated value of Z is. So 
this will be 12 because after this z plus plus basically incremented after printing so 11 went to on to become 12 and then that's why basically we are printing this z here so this is 12 everyone clear until now okay yes yeah, yeah. so uh we'll see some kind of assignment operators as well here uh so this is similar to this means i think we have already seen these things like i equal to j this is like assigning the value of j to i and then i plus equal to 5 equal to i plus equal to 5 what do you mean by i plus equal to 5 this is like i equal to i plus 5 mm -hmm. you got it so with this i equal, uh, yeah i plus equal to 5 this is similar to like i equal to i plus 5 and again i minus equal to 5 this is same as i equal to i minus 5 so mm. this is a shorthand operate shorthand uh, way of writing as well i plus equal to 5 is similar to like i equal to i plus 1 i minus equal to 5 is like i equal to i minus 5 then similarly for all these operations asterisk mm. equal to like it is i into 5 i divided by equal to 5 is like i uh, equal to i by 5 this is similar to uh, okay. to see it consequently right so for example yeah it, this I is a shorthand uh, shorthand assignment operator we also called it as shorthand assignment operator but this is similar to like uh, uh, that i equal to i plus 5 and i min, uh, i equal to i plus 5 and i plus equal to 5 are similar so there's nothing much of difference mm -hmm. so we'll keep this class to until here itself we'll cover the next chapters i uh, there were still some operator things remaining i thought i thought i would be able to cover those things by today but there was few issues with um, like uh, getting ahead with the first program and we had few issues with the IntelliJ of um, someone. Yeah. So uh, I would request everyone that please keep your setup ready before every class such that we do not uh, waste any time. And I think there was some problem with uh, the IntelliJ uh, who was facing the issue with opening IntelliJ. I just forgot. So, please just go ahead and like free up some memory. I think that would basically solve your problem. And then uh, whatever issues you, whatever things you haven't followed in this class, you may ask me before uh, when we start the next class. So everyone, I'll send these examples, this Java dot, uh, this Java files to you by today. And please go uh, through it, just go, uh, also, I have like send it to you the Google slides and also the YouTube uh, channel link was also provided in that WhatsApp group. So this, uh, uh, whatever exercises or demos file I have, I will send it to you through email. Please go ahead and practice this. If you don't do hands-on, if you don't just, uh, if you uh, do not uh, go ahead and like revise your concepts, right? It will be difficult to go into the next class if you have already not understood. So just go ahead and try to like, uh, uh, just go through the entire content, whatever doubts you have, you can like ask in the next class starting, uh, start of the next class. So I think that will basically help you for the next class as well. And you can go through the Google uh, slides and the YouTube videos as well. So whatever things you have missed, you, you might get it there. Uh, you, you basically everything we have like covered. So if you go through the Google slides and this uh, YouTube videos, whatever I'm uploading that you on that YouTube channel. So basically you will be able to get it. If still you have issues in the next class, we'll discuss this. I'm stopping the share and I'll stop the recording. Okay, uh, Pritam, can yeah. I ask one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, I think it dropped off your screen. Uh, okay. Do you want me questions. to share it? Yeah. Let me share yeah. the screen again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please. Can you, uh, can you go back to uh, uh, naming constants? 
Okay, you want me to go to the slides? Yeah, naming, naming, uh, yeah, naming constants, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, naming. Okay, one second. Yeah. Yes, oh, not naming, I think so. Uh, when you write static uh, final value inside the class. Oh, Yes. Okay. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this name constant. Yeah, yeah, this one. So, uh, you know, you create it for static final, uh, final float uh, inside the class, but not, uh, the main string. Yeah, so, not in the main yeah, method. Yeah, the main method, which means, uh, for always static value, uh, created inside the class, but not main string. Yeah. Yeah, I'll teach so, you about more of the concept of static. Uh. So static is anything which is basically of a class level. So it has to be declared at the class level. I'll teach you in detail about the static. So I was not going into quite uh, more detail now because like I was just trying to show you how we create a constant. But static is anything we basically uh, create at the uh, class level. And if you want to like basically create static final uh, data type, static final data type so basically you will be creating it above the class uh, sorry uh, above the main method and just below the class so this basically creates your constant i will teach you about these concepts of static static basically anything at the class level so i'll teach you these concepts later so uh, other than that means keep in mind that whenever we are creating a constant we'll follow this static final such that what this basically means is this pi value is at class level and this is final. Final means what cannot be changed. So this pi's value cannot be changed. That is why we have created this as final. And this is a class level variable. It can be used anywhere inside the class. So keep these things in mind and I'll let you know. We have like static can be used with variables. Static can be used with the method names and static keyword can also be used with the class names similarly is like final keyword as well so final can be used with class names final can be used with uh, method names and also the variables but there are like different use cases where we uh, use this uh, static and final which will cover as we go ahead so for now i think this information should be clear for you so I'll teach when we go ahead with like each of the static and final keywords in great detail. Is it fine for now? Uh, okay, that is fine. But you know, uh, uh, as this time API value is, uh, you know, it is co constant. So you uh, cannot, we, we can you cannot static. But for my understood below uh, main method, uh, so we will create for uh, dynamic, all dynamic uh, constants. So, uh, it, yeah, so in main method, you can like, uh, so basically, this is the way you will be basically creating constant in main method. If you try to like, uh, create any final, uh, you do you want to like create any final, uh, variables inside the main method? I think, can you try out like creating any final inside the main method? You will see, find t, in t, z. <laughs> Uh, see if i create some final uh can you please uh, okay okay got it got it now see we are able to like create this but whenever we are uh, like creating this stat uh, let me just try to put static as well see what it is saying modifier static is not allowed here why? Because okay. because this is a class level thing, right? So, so we won't be like. You, so can you copy and uh, paste it inside the class? Yeah, I'll paste it this inside the class. I'll paste it here. Mm -hmm. If I paste okay. it here, right? You see I the guess. error went away, right? Okay, guys. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm doing okay, now I got it. Okay, I, I understand now. Oh, you know, I was now you got it. 
<clears throat> the API values is constant, so that is why for my confusion. Yeah. So right. So static is. will static is anything which uh, will not be allowed here. It will be allowed at the class level. I will teach you like there are uh, ways where you can uh, create a static variables, static methods, and static class. I'll teach you all those things in great detail, but you saw that static modifier was not allowed here, right? We got the error and we'll create it here. So let's keep this class until now. I think we have already extended like more than half an hour. Uh, so we'll keep this class until here and I'm stopping the recording.